Hey there, CPO here, and in this video, I'm replacing an O2 sensor in a 2004 Jeep Wrangler. All right guys, so you might notice I'm inside where it's nice and toasty warm because outside it's freezing. So I'm gonna give you the info up front and then we're gonna go outside and work on the Jeep. I wanted to limit my cold exposure as best I can so I can keep feeling my face, which I really enjoy. Anyway, uh, so CJ's Jeep, the uh, 2004 Jeep Wrangler, got the lift kit on, went out for a test drive and uh, threw a check engine light and actually ended up with two codes. One of them was an EVAP slow leak, which turns out was related to the fuel cap uh, that wasn't locking in properly. So I replaced that, that code is now gone. The other code though, is related to an O2 sensor. It's the P0138 code. And it's a very common code, especially in these Jeeps, once they get around 100,000 miles, O2 sensors do go bad. So uh, I'm gonna replace it, and uh, I'm gonna take you along for that journey. But let's talk about the O2 sensors. There's actually four of them in the Jeep. It's a 4.0 six cylinder, and there are two banks, and they come into two different exhaust manifolds, two different catalytic converters, and then they converge again back into one exhaust pipe. But, so you need to figure out which O2 sensor is bad. And the code actually is specific to the sensor that went bad. So if you Google P0138, you'll find out that it's bank one sensor two. What that means is it's gonna be part of bank one, which is the front half of the engine, cylinders one through three. Uh, and then two is the downstream O2 sensor. So there's upstream and downstream. Upstream is above the catalytic converter. That's what's gonna be sensor one. And then once you get past the catalytic converter, there'll be another sensor, that's the downstream sensor, and that is sensor number two. So I'm going to the manifold on the front, tracing down, I see the sensor number one, the upstream, ignore that, go down past the catalytic converter, and there's another sensor there, that is sensor number two, and that's the one I'm replacing. And thankfully, that one isn't too difficult to get to. But these sensors are notoriously challenging to get out. I mean, if you think about it, they've been plugged into the exhaust for a very long time, and that's a recipe for thread welding uh, stuckedness. So uh, in order to give this thing the best chance of coming off nicely, uh, I'm doing a couple things. Number one, I PB blasted it a little bit in advance, knowing I was gonna do this. Number two is the Jeep's out there actually running right now. I took it for a drive, actually went to pick up the O2 sensor part, which I'll talk about here in a second, and then brought it back, left it parked uh, in neutral, parking brake on, wheels chocked, plenty of ventilation, and it's still running because I want to keep that thing hot because uh, when I'm working on it, I want to work on it while it's still warm because I think that's my best chance of dealing with it. So I'm going to turn it off as soon as I get out there and then start wrenching on it to see if I can get it while it's still warm. The other thing I did is I stopped over to AutoZone and used their Lona Tool program, which I've talked about before. I think it was my jogging video number three, I believe. Uh, but anyway, you can borrow, basically buy and then return and get all your money back these uh, oxygen sensor wrench sets. So this is a special socket with a slot in it that allows you to uh, put it over the O2 sensor and then have the cable come out and then use a, uh, a breaker bar to loosen that up. So I'll show you that here in a second. But first I need to make sure I talk to you about the O2 sensors themselves. Um, I went and got the NTK, this is a 23132 uh, part number. This is the part number for the bank one sensor two, O2 sensor that I'm replacing. They do have different part numbers, so make sure you realize that. And also be aware that not all manufacturers of the O2 sensors play nicely with these Jeeps. In my research, I found it's a pretty well-known fact that Bosch O2 sensors don't seem to play nicely, and the ones that are almost always guaranteed to work are the NTKs, which are the OEM providers. So they're more expensive. Uh, and that's a hard pill to swallow because it's easy to get a Bosch for 30 bucks instead of paying 60 bucks for an NTK. But as much as I love to save money, I also like only doing repairs once. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and splurge and get the product that I know is most likely to work and, uh, and spend the extra money. It ended up only costing me 20 bucks more because what I do, and it's something I recommend for you, is if you can find it online, it particularly Advance Auto, I can usually get a 15% off or a 20% off coupon code at Advance Auto, buy it online, drive down, pick it up, and save myself some money. So I saved myself 10 bucks on this just by buying it at my office and then driving down and then picking it up. So anyway, you might consider that. 
50 bucks for an O2 sensor though is still a lot of money, uh, but it is what it is. And we need to clear that code, but more importantly, we need a properly operating O2 sensor so that the engine can run as efficiently as possible. Fuel mileage tends to tank uh, when the O2 sensors go bad. So, so let me show you how the socket's gonna fit on and then, uh, and then I'll take you outside and we'll knock this thing out. All right, so here is the O2 sensor itself. Here's the socket and basically it's gonna be plugged in to the exhaust. And what you're gonna do is slip this over the cable and it's gonna clamp down right there. It's basically just a, uh, a socket with a slot in it uh, to allow you to get it over that cable. And then what you do is you plug in a uh, ratchet or a, in this case, I'm gonna use a breaker bar because it's gonna give you the best chance of getting this thing loose. So anyway, that's how the O2 sensor sockets work. And uh, I highly recommend going down and borrowing them. You don't need to buy them, just go borrow one. There are other ways to do this. You can obviously get a wrench on it. Some people have luck with that, some people don't. If you're replacing it anyway, I've seen people break off the uh, cable and use a deep well socket. Um, either way, this is an easy way to do it. It's designed for this job, so uh, why not take advantage of it? So anyway, let's go out and work on this Jeep. So now once I have this broken free with the breaker bar, I can use just a regular wrench to uh, take this off. And uh, I'm just gonna use a crescent wrench for that. All right, now as you can see on this new replacement O2 sensor, it has anti-seize already pre-added to the threads. That's why there's this little plastic cap. So make sure you leave this cap on until you're ready to install it, otherwise you'll get anisees everywhere. Uh, and then I also wouldn't touch uh, the end of this sensor if you can avoid it. Uh, try your best to avoid touching that. Now there are torque specs uh, identified in the instructions. Make sure you follow that. Uh, for this application, it looks like it's about a half to a three quarter inch turn past finger tight. So what I would do is go in there, finger tighten it, and then use that crescent wrench to, uh, to pop it about another three quarters of a turn after that. There we go. That is finger tight. Now I'm gonna hit it uh, quarter turn, another quarter, and one more quarter for three quarters of a turn. Nice and snug. Awesome. Now this replacement cable is a little bit longer than the cable that came with it from the factory. So in order to keep it from getting hung up on things, I'm gonna go ahead and tidy it up with a zip tie. All right guys, that is the new O2 sensor. Uh, bank one, sensor two installed. So now I'm gonna pull the negative cable on the battery, let it sit for about 10 minutes, clear those codes, and then take her back out for a test drive. And uh, if all is well, I should get no more check engine light. So anyway guys, thanks for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.